Welcome, everyone. I have the most amazing guest. Her name is Erica Durand, and I am very envious of her because she lives this lifestyle of travel that I am so excited to learn more about. In fact, Erica, you share with them where you just got back from. Yeah, I just flew in yesterday from Kona, Hawaii, and now I'm in Las Vegas picking up my dogs from my family. <laughs> I know, and here I am. We were just chatting before we got started, and I was telling her I'm in Vegas, and she said she was, and I'm like, I know. It is like, what, 116 degrees out here today, so if either of us are a little shiny, please <laughs> <don't forget>. <laughs> So before we get started, I want to share with you all a little bit about Erica. I am just so honored that she took the time to be part of the La Femme Marketing Symposium. She has so much amazing information to share, um, but I want to share with you who Erica is, she is a business coach and freedom-based luxury lifestyle designer. I love that whole luxury lifestyle designer. Awesome. She gives expert guidance, support, and accountability to service-based entrepreneurs so they can build a freedom business so they can work from anywhere. Love that. And earned a consistent 5 to 20K plus per month. She also helps them set up all their systems and structures so they have the freedom to work just about three days per week or less. Okay, that's one of my questions. How do you do that? Erica travels full-time living at the luxury resorts that sponsor her podcast and web TV shows. Ah, for more information and to book your complimentary Aloha Strategy session, visit ericaduran.co. So with that being said, Erica, we are super excited to dive in. So our topic today is going to be the secrets to snagging high paying clients. So I really want to know how you work three days a week and then I have a whole bunch <laughs> of questions for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a productivity expert before I went into full-on business coaching. So I do incorporate a lot of that uh, into my coaching now. Ah, so this is how you've been able to like get a down to a three-day work week. Right, right. And a, a lot of it's boundaries. I only take client calls Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And for some reason, they never book Wednesday. So a lot of times I have a two day work week. Wow. And then all the content uh, I batch into. Uh, so if we're doing podcasts, I'll batch the four podcasts for a month, like on a Friday. So it's three days a week, roughly. Um, of course, things come up and what have you. But just having that uh, structure and discipline is really freed up a lot of time and structuring my packages in a way that I wanted to work. So it's, we even added an implementation week, which every three weeks we take a week off from coaching so they can implement a big project and I can do my content or what have you. So yeah, working less and less. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, how many clients do you take a, like on a monthly basis? I usually have between 10 and 20, just depending on the time of year and what have you. And I also have a group program that currently has 30 people in it. So that program is really unlimited. There could be a lot, there could be hundreds and hundreds of people in it. Uh, but one-to-one -one clients, since I do dive in and do my team and I do their websites and everything, it, um, I can only handle about 10 to 20 okay. yeah. at a time. That makes total sense. So um, you know, you said your team, so do you really help them develop their systems and their sales funnels and that whole thing? Yeah, there, we start with ideal client, like most, I think, I hope most business coaches do. And then we take the ideal client and build their packages and programs around the ideal client. Then we put in their, all the little things from their payment structures all the way up to their actual websites, their sales funnels, their lead magnets, their um, back-end CRM systems, all those things um, are set up. Amazing. So really, you are like, you almost have like a, um, a for lack of better, better word, like a, des like a, a whole business design firm almost, <laughs> like work with them and put it all in place for them. That's incredible. I love yeah, we, we kept adding on things over the years because we found that their marketing message would get messed up if for, say, 
we were working on their branding and messaging and then we handed it over to some other web designer would just get completely messed up and be inconsistent so we just brought it in house and they have one po point of contact for all those things and it's yeah i never thought of it that way thanks for pointing that out it's like <laughs> No, I mean, I love that. And, you know, I know I haven't even dived into all these questions I have for you, but I mean, I really find that fascinating that you do it like that because um, I like the idea of a one-stop shop. I think sometimes the whole online marketing, like everything that goes with it can be so convoluted and so scary, especially for people that are starting out or even have been in online for a couple of years. It can be a lot, right? Yeah, I do have, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have a, clients from two schools. So the one school of clients is they just want out of their nine to five job no matter what, and they don't really have a business idea whatsoever. And then my other pool of clients has been trying to chip away at their business for about two years and they just aren't making enough money and everything's overwhelming and they don't have any systems in place their their marketing's off um they and this is like i got i gotta get this fixed or i'm going back to my job kind of situation right. so i have those two kind of camps of people if you will <laughs> well that's perfect because it really dives deep into um my next question, which is what do you need to have in place before marketing to high paying clients, right? I mean, it's similar. So why don't you share a little bit more about that? Yeah. And just one thing to add is we, we also heavily focus on creating their lifestyle first and their ideal lifestyle, their ideal day before we even think about their ideal client because I don't want them creating a job for themselves. I want them creating a business that's going to last and they're not going to get burned out and everything. So just one caveat to that, but it, this, um, what do you need to have in place is kind of, I can answer it two ways. And the first way I could give you a long list of things to have in place, like your contract and your lead magnet and your sales funnel and your website and all these things. But that really trips up a lot of new or struggling entrepreneurs. What they really need to, to do is just start simply having conversations with people that they think might be the type of ideal client that they want to work with. So we can get into this long list of things you need, like your contract and your, and your um, merchant account and all those things. But I think that really holds people up and they spend too much time fussing with their logo and fussing with their website. And I mean, you can't even create a website or a sales funnel or a lead magnet if you don't know who you're talking to. So the first step is really getting on some market research calls um, and surveying the types of people that you'd like to work with. Exactly. Exactly. And I absolutely 100% agree with that. I think that you know, even I have a mastermind and even in my mastermind, I have a few people that they really don't want to get on the calls and do the client research. And I keep going back and saying, look, you know, everybody else has make, made money the first three weeks we've been in my right. for three weeks. And the two people that haven't made the money yet are the people that don't want to get on the phone and do the market research, right? They think they know their ideal client. And my big thing that I keep saying is you may think you know your ideal client, but really, you know, 70% of maybe that you know them, but there's that 30% that you just don't know until you talk to them. Right. You don't know. And it's more about even picking up on their languaging and their wording during these conversations, because that's what keeps you from not staring at a blank screen when you go to write your homepage. It's you have all these phrases and words that your ideal client uses, and you can very easily write your website and your packages from that instead of struggling with a blank screen in front of you all the time. And uh, I can always tell who is not doing the market research in the beginning and they say they did because a few weeks later, I'll see them in Facebook groups uh, trying to get calls then to catch up. So uh, I, they'll say they did the market research and they're like, here's my package, here's my homepage, here's everything. And then nothing's selling. And then three weeks later, I see them in Facebook groups like trolling for <laughs> market research calls. So I'm like, I thought you already did this. <laughs> That's so funny. So, 
Um, one of the questions I have for you um, really is where do you recommend people find the best, well, the best place to go and find and market to high paying clients? Yeah. So there's this, this uh, fallacy out there that high paying clients are like magical unicorns and they're hiding and, and everything. And they're not, they're totally everywhere. So it's just someone like you and me that once is ready to make a big change and ready to invest in, in their change or their transformation or, or their life, whatever that we're coaching on. And it's, it's going back to the market research again, they are everywhere and you have to go where they're at and uh, figure out where your ideal client is hanging at, out at and then show up there, whether it's a Facebook group or a networking meeting or anything like that. Um, there's really no secret spot. So that should make people feel better that, you know, they're everywhere. And if you put your packages and your pricing correctly, and you position your offering correctly and, and show them the value, they're either gonna say yes or no, and then you don't have to be a slimy salesperson. True, very, very, very true. I love that, that's so true. And you're right, like they can be everywhere and depending on your niche, you don't know, like you have to hang out where they hang out and that is so true. So <laughs> what do you think there's the one thing that they, they like any, person listening to this, any woman listening to this, what is the one thing that she needs to have in place before she can close a high paying client? Yeah, there is one definite thing that they need to have in place for a high paying client. And that is to not be afraid of the phone and to get on the phone, which is, we kind of talked about that earlier, but that was for market research. This is for actually closing the sale. And I'm going through this with so many clients right now. They think they have their website and they have their packages and they have everything set. So they've launched their business. Well, no, you didn't launch anything yet. You, you need to um, have your sales calls and actually close the calls to uh, have a business and a, a business that's profitable. So I would say the number one thing you have to have in place is a, is a sales conversation and not just think that your website's going to sell for you. It's going to get people interested, but I think if you're selling anything above $2,000, you're really going to have to have a conversation with the person, a free consult, a discovery call, a clarity call. You're not going to be able to, unless you're super internet famous, you're not going to be able to sell a two to $20,000 package by a point and click on your website. It's just not going to happen. So getting out of that mentality that you build your website and they'll come is, is, is a big thing that I see uh, a problem with and why so many people aren't making money. If they would just get on the phone and have that sales conversation structured in a, in a way that positions you as an expert and, and it's not slimy or salesy or anything, uh, they would be closing a lot more uh, things instead of just checking their web stats every day. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's all I do is get on sales conversations. I enjoy it. I really feel like sales conversations really are like a service, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you yeah. sell high end, because when you sell high end, you're usually um, giving a really huge, big transformation in someone's life, whether it's their personal life or their business or combination. And it makes great impact. So if you can look at it like that, the phone doesn't feel so heavy, right? Or that, yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah, not being attached if they're going to say yes or no, just uh, having a actual conversation and not a sales pitch and seeing where they're at and where they want to get to. And if you can help them, great. If you can't, like, get over it. Don't, I have some clients this morning that were just so upset that they got rejected. I'm like, you know, you're going for no's. Like, see how many no's you get before you get a yes, and then you'll know how many calls to have and Exactly. Just, just being a, a detached from the outcome of that. Exactly. I mean, it's huge. It's really interesting um, that people don't realize that. Like, they really are so attached to the outcome, and you cannot be attached, attached to the outcome. In fact, I was talking to one of my friends um, online today, and we're, we're peers, and, you know, it's really interesting because she still struggles with that whole not – 
having it's a hard she has a hard time really detaching herself from the outcome and i'm like sweetie that's why i said to her don't look at it as a sales conversation look at it as you're just offering service to someone because right. i always preach the whole they're either going to become a client a collaborator or you know now so my brain just went blank but like they'll refer you whatever yeah a referral is. partner yeah referral partner you know or just someone that's just an amazing connection that's what i call it a connection because they can refer you they can love you they can become your biggest ch champion maybe you don't even want them to become a great connection now yeah. <laughs> who knows right hey that's why my sessions are called aloha it means hello and goodbye <laughs> yeah. awesome. like that. that's awesome <laughs> Maybe everybody will steal that from you. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So what are some ways you can make your competition irrelevant and stop all the competition and comparison that goes on online? I mean, you know how that is. Yeah, it's, it's very demotivating, especially when you're a new entrepreneur and you see all the, you know, people cheersing champagne in front of the Eiffel Tower in their, in their marketing and stuff. It's getting pretty... Um, it's, I don't want to use the word saturated. It's not saturated at all. It's just that that imagery is, is kind of everywhere now. And it's kind of honestly pretty boring, right? <laughs> you know? And so I always like to pick things from my client's uh, personality or their background or their story and put that a little bit more in the forefront of their marketing so that, I mean, we're still talking to humans. Google's not going to hire us. Other humans are going to hire us. So we can't write our web pages totally for SEO and Google. We have to write them to connect with strangers on the internet that have never met us before. So putting in pieces of your story to have you stand out. I know a lot of business coaches, they're, they're um, online persona either is that Eiffel Tower with a champagne kind of luxury look or it's they look kind of like a realtor wearing a suit with their arms crossed they look like a, a realtor so I try to really bring in elements of of the client's personality and background so like I have Doc, my business changed the day I put dachshunds and palm trees on my website <laughs> so really so tell me about that yeah, I was afraid to put it up there. I thought people would think that it's in, unprofessional, like you're, you're charging, you know, so much for a business coaching package and these websites and everything. And then you have, you know, cheesy palm trees and dachshunds on your website. And that, that day when I stepped into that and stop, stopped trying to look like other coaches and other people's websites is, I don't know. It was so freeing and it was, it made my business fun again, instead of being overwhelming and stressful, it really made it fun uh, to work on again. That's awesome. And, and that's the thing, right? Like if you like the whole Eiffel Tower thing and that is who you are and that's your business, great, but still bring your personal elements into it. I mean, you know, my website needs to be updated, for example, um, my AngelaGiles.com website, but I have another brand, the La Femme brand. And but when I first put my website out there or three, like three or four years ago, I mean, I have three teenage boys. Like I showcase my family. My family supports oh, yeah. me. And I talk about it, right? Like I have a luxury brand, but at the same time, I have three teenagers. I have two crazy dogs. I've had the same husband for years, <laughs> for years. Like, you know, we have a busy, crazy life. And I'm very honest and upfront. Like, you know, I talk about it all the time. Like my house is always crazy like there's always doors slamming there's always draggy clothes everywhere because i have a family like it's okay right like yeah you yourself and i think and so other moms relate to you and the craziness yeah i have so many people uh, that just love dogs i think out of 20 clients one has a cat and it's just because yeah. you're you're aligning with the person that's more like more like your style or your personality and and that's if i always tell clients if you act like other coaches and your marketing looks just like theirs you're not going to close anything because you're going to be marketing to their clients and that's not your client and you're i hope that made sense but yeah. if you model someone too closely you're not going to close anything because that's that's her deal that's her story <laughs> Exactly. So tell me a little bit how you got into 
um, the whole traveling and then how that relates. You said you do podcasts and a little bit of TV. So I would love to hear about this. Yeah. So I, I used long story short, I was in, I was a hotel executive for 15 years for Marriott and various other hotel chains. Um, my mom was a travel agent and used to take me on her fam trips, familiarization trips. And I just never wanted to be in, in one location and I'm a minimalist too. So, um, I just remember distinctly, I was like five years old and we, we, you know, we left our house, went to Hawaii, we had our suitcases and we were fine for two weeks in, with just what was in our suitcase. So that's when it really hit me that I don't need a house full of stuff. I, I survived just fine with what was in my suitcase. So I've been traveling full time since 2012 and it just kind of everything that I thought was a mistake in my past, like spending 15 years in corporate hotels and all this stuff kind of came together with the way my business is now that the podcasts are sponsored by resorts. And then I get to stay there in exchange for advertising the resort on the podcast. So it's, it's kind of like all come together in the last two years of, um, of that and aligning with them helped build my brand too, because you know, I have the Hilton Waikoloa Village sponsoring the podcast and it fits that we have palm trees and all on the website now. <laughs> exactly. Now, how many podcast viewers do you have now? I don't even look at that. I actually had the sponsors before um, before we had a show. I, I secured the sponsors before we had the show. If I had a guess, it would be probably, it's, it's not very big of a following, probably 25,000 or so downloads uh, each time, but I don't really even look at those things. I just put it out there. That's awesome. So with your clients, do you encourage them to start a podcast? Is that the model or do you just have them work on whatever their niche might be? Like, how do you help them get clients? Like, what do you, do you know, like podcast is a great way to get clients, I'm sure. Um, yeah, podcast is a great way, but it's not for everyone. So we, we dig in real deep two ways. First, it's um, what they like doing. So if they hate writing, I'm not going to, tell them they need to blog every week. Um, podcasts are a lot of work, but a few of my clients really like doing them. They think it's easy and fun. Um, so we really dig into their skills and what they like doing so that their marketing's consistent. But on the other end, we also look to where their ideal clients are. So if their ideal clients are on Twitter and not Facebook, of course, we're going to spend more time on Twitter. So it's a little blend about what you like doing and where your people are. Exactly. That makes total sense. I 100% agree with that. Um, so how else should someone prepare to work with a high paying client? Yeah, I think um, what people don't realize is they, it sounds cliche, you have to work on yourself, but for the, your confidence to come through, you have to have your home organized and clean. You have to have all your bills paid and not late. You have to um, take care of yourself, self care, go to the gym, you know, eat right. Like you have to really work on yourself to have the confidence and the clarity in your own mind to go out and mentor somebody else. So I think a lot of people need to stop watching webinars and learning the latest sales funnel gimmick and do more, uh, not so much more self-development because they kind of go overload on that, but just like get your stuff together. <laughs> get, get, as I say, get your shiz together, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's going to come through in your, in your, marketing it's going to come through in your consistency it's going to come through in your photographs even so um that's a huge part of it especially in my group program there's a lot of modules on time management organizing cleaning up your life kind of stuff before you can help anyone else kind of thing 
you know, and I like to do this. I love showcasing women. Do you mind sharing the link to your group program? Because it sounds divine. Yeah, it's it's called Club Alihi Group Coaching and Mastermind. And if they just go to my main website, it's it's uh, part of all the programs. And they so, have everything and everything on there so people can check that out. Yeah, everything is at ericaduran.co. It'll have my one-to-ones, my VIP days, my group program, all that stuff is there. And it's easily to click over to the membership site rather than giving a bunch of confusing right. other sites. That makes, that makes total sense. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. So one of the things that um, I really like that you talked about, you know, is just getting yourself almost like centered, if you will. So you talk a lot about productivity, like productivity in your, in your programs. You know, obviously I was stalking you and reading your website. (laughs) I found you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I really want to go back to, um, and this is maybe applies to, women that are you know kids and careers and like working online you have kids and you have all these things going on right and even a single person can get overwhelmed with all the crazy stuff that they are society expects them to do so how do you like can you give a piece of advice or someone that really needs to streamline their life get their shiz in order get more productive so they really can like look to someone like you to like help them create like a three, you know, day work week where they can actually enjoy the rest of their life. Yeah, it's, um, I'm, I mean, that I could talk for days on this. Um, but one thing that they can do right away, that's totally going to change their life is to don't check your email and social first thing in the morning. And I just did a whole podcast on, on this email thing. I mean, I I called it email rehab because people just stay in there all day waiting for a lead to come in. I was like, you can't, you can't stay in your email box all day. (laughs) Um, That's going to be really life changing is not sleeping with your cell phone and putting it in another room and not checking your social feeds and your email right away. Um, it sounds simple, but it is truly an addiction these days. And that's why I called it email rehab on that episode. Um, and another thing is, is just say, saying no a lot. I don't think, I think people don't put enough boundaries in or they're just getting caught up watching what other people are doing. If it's on Facebook or Instagram, or just even at a, an in-person networking group, they're just in like so many people, other people's business, <laughs> not, you know, paying attention to their own life and their own business. No, that's really true. Well, and you know, it's like, do you feel like, um, so for me, for example, like I have certain days I work, certain things I do, but I find that like when I'm about ready to do a product launch or things like that, that I do spend more time. Is that something that um, you you work in for your clients or that you recommend that people handle differently? Like if they're, if they're a person that has a business where they're doing product launches, like how would you, what kind of advice would you give to someone on something like that? Yeah. Product launches, of course, there's time more crunch time. Or if you're, if you're first launching your podcast or if you're rehauling your website, yeah, there's going to be those times, but it's not, um, it, that that's not the everyday reaction mode that people are in. But for those times, I would always, always overestimate how long it's going to take you to do things and work backwards from your launch date. Um, and those are the times where you do have to kind of hustle and pull, you know, get stuff done. So having a uh, downtime before and after a launch is huge. So if I have a big launch, I'll usually schedule a week off bef- before I even start on it. So I'm really clear before I start on it. And then the week after it, I kind of like get off the grid too. <laughs> And that makes total sense. And I really like what you said in the very beginning of this, because sometimes I think you said that you do three weeks of coaching and then you have the fourth week. This is like an implementation week for your clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that because you can really take that and apply it to marketing, right? Like you could do like somehow do your scheduling. So you have like a day, 
like say you market every day, you market like five days a week, but four days a week you market. And then maybe the fifth day you focus on, you know, learn, learning a new technique or getting better at the technique that you're doing or, you know, going through your to-do list, whatever. Like you really can structure yourself a little bit better. And I think that you'll get more done and you'll be a happier marketer, a happier person. Right. And being more consistent. So if there's anything that you do daily, I found it really helpful that you have your morning routine, perhaps with your exercise and your meditation and all your self help self care stuff. But if you tack on to your morning routine at the very end of it, maybe your blog post, daily blog post or your daily Instagram post or, or just tacking it onto the morning routine really helps. So it doesn't get lost by the end of the day. Um, I found that to help a lot. Um, I'm trying to think what else the way the implementation week came about is for, for six months, I kept an eye on my clients and they would without a skip, um, they would get sick, go on vacation or have some big project once a month so there they would essentially skip uh the fourth week of coaching of that month and it would be all random and then i looked at this for about six months and i'm like you guys are all taking off random weeks and i never get a week off so <laughs> so because they're all random so i'm like look here's the here's our here's my implementation week calendar build your you know trips or whatever around that <laughs> kind of thing oh, that- <laughs> That works really, really well. I think it's so important. I mean, you've actually given me some food for thought and I'm like, you know what, maybe I need to like reevaluate my schedule and you know what I'm working on because truly I think, you know, just like one of the things you said, I I really like this. So I'm different probably than everybody else. I get up at 5 a.m. and I do all my marketing between 5 and 8. That mm-hmm. is, but mm-hmm. I'm not for a living, right? Like that is what I do, and then I work on my self improvement and things like that after that. Okay. And that works for me because I don't get client calls. I don't have people facebooking me as much. My kids are in bed. You know, I don't get interrupted about my husband sleeping. Like I am just, it's just me, and I mark it in the morning, and I love right. it. And it works better for me. Um, I think that the one thing, though, that I have learned over the years, and maybe you can speak to this as well, is the whole boundary setting thing, too, with clients. The whole, oh, well, can I just, I have a a favor. I need you to help me with this, or can you help me with this? You know, like if you have, for example, a group um, coaching program, and all of a sudden someone's like, oh, well, can I just hop on the phone with you for a minute so you can help me with this kind of thing? You know, how do you handle that in your business? Yeah, I I had I had all the mistakes, so I totally structured it. Now um, all the private clients get a, a client handbook for any question, a frequently asked questions or procedures that come up. Um, I tried. I moved from just giving them a scheduling link to doing standing appointments um, because it it works really well. Um, you know, if you don't have standing appointments, a three month package could very easily drag into a six month package because they're not scheduling their, their stuff. Um, the group program, we have three live calls uh, a month on random times and days for all the different time zones. So they can have complete access for me on those calls and not a whole lot of people call in because they have private coaching too. So they're like, oh, I'll just talk to her on the private call. Um, so it's structured in a way that they know before they join what's going to happen. Um, you, you have, I even have a thing in my handbook that, uh, email support in my package is not coaching by email. There's a difference. Coaching by email can turn into a 10 page, uh, (laughs) 10 page, uh, document, uh, Email support is just, hey, can you look at this? Or, hey, can you can you fix my Twitter feed? You know, whatever it is, it's just a quick little. Can you check my Can you check my bio? Um, can you read this? What's your opinion on this? It's not this long, coaching by email thing that used to happen. <laughs> exactly, that is yeah. so important. I love that. That's amazing. That's really, really, really good. So, really, you set the boundaries up front. And yeah, yeah. If someone tries to violate the boundaries, 
Um, if, if they want to, uh, like, let's say they're in the group program and they want a one-to-one -one call, I have a tiny little program built for that. It's called a mini intensive. So I just direct them to, yeah, sure, we can do a one-to-one -one call. It's, it's, it's the mini intensive package. So I'm not really scared that I'm going to make them angry or anything. Like, cause I have a, I have a program for that. There's a mini intensive for that. Go, go sign up. <laughs> so basically I like that. So you, you, you already have a program in place for that. So you really handled it before it even became an issue or Whatever. Yeah, well, it, it was an issue, and so I created the program. <laughs> so. And that's what women can learn from you, like when you're marketing and then you're setting up your programs, is because this does happen. It has happened to me for 15 years, like, right? Like, I'm like, okay, well, you can upgrade, but I really like what I've never thought of that. That's a great idea. You just put a little program in place. Yeah, and in the, in the handbook, even, I mean, I've had to even list out, I'm, I, I shouldn't have to list this out, but it says, you know, this is your coaching time. It'd be great if you weren't driving or eating or on Facebook during this time. So, cause you know, I'll get people chewing on the phone and things like that. And so you have to really um, be painfully obvious when you're, when you're setting it up. And there's things that I keep adding to the contract, you know, there, a refund situation will come up or, we need to remove someone from the group because they're being totally disruptive. And so we had to add that to our uh, contract that, you know, if you're being disrupted from the group and we remove you, there's still no refund. Like we had to spell it out like that. Um, just because as things happen and go wrong, we just try to, okay, let's, let's not have this happen next time. And how can we fix it? Um, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of other boundaries that, people cross um the your time's up but you keep talking uh thing that's big with coaches and that's really simple just to have a really loud timer go off or a phone go off or something like that just to so then you're not not trying to get them to stop talking you can just have the timer do it for you and be the bad guy <laughs> it's like the therapy therapist thing. right right no i totally understand that okay well erica is there any like um, I guess one last piece of advice that you could give the women watching this that they could walk away from today and implement, like the one thing that they could implement to really stand out and get their first high paying client. Uh, to really stand out and get your first high paying client. I think the number one thing you would need to do is create a package for your the type of person that you want to work with create a package that's not just one-off sessions you can't just bundle a bunch of one-off sessions and call that a package and discount it and say that that's a premium package because that is working more hours for less dollars and we're trying to get out of the dollars for hours so um, adding more wow factor and value to your packages will definitely make you stand out. Seeing where your clients are struggling and adding that to the packages of value. So exactly how I did with my, um, my platinum and diamond packages is we saw people really struggling with all the technology pieces. So we just added that to the package as a value. So the whole relationship and the whole experience and the, the, the job gets done better, um, adding things that stand out. So a whole lot of business coaches will not sit there and do your website with you, like hands-on sharing screens with you. And so that's just, an example of something that I did to try to stand out, uh, took a skill that was super easy to me and put it in the package. And every, it's everyone's so like thankful that that's in there, the technology support. Right. That's super important. I think so. Um, do you want to share with us what your free gift is that people can download? Yeah, I put together a 10 day challenge last November and it's, it's been really popular. So I just kept it going and it's uh, 10 days to snagging your first high paying client. So it has very, um, very specific action steps. It has specific tools to use. So you don't have to research like 20 different email tools and everything like that. Um, and it does have a lot of pieces about getting your, your stuff together so that you can have the confidence and attract high paying clients. So it's not just, uh, 
a, a challenge on how to set up your sales funnel or anything. It has, it's pretty well, well rounded. Awesome. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm really excited. So they can download that too. Well, thank you. We are so appreciative of your time, Erica. Um, I know that you're a busy lady and I love the fact that you work a three hour work week and all the gems that you shared with us today on how to snag high paying clients and just having a very productive schedule and boundaries. Wow. I mean, it's huge because once you market and you start getting these clients, you need to be able to put these things in place to really lead the kind of lifestyle you want to do. Yeah. And, and no one really gets angry about it. They know everything up front, so they don't, they don't get, you just have to, um, you know, manage the expectations of what's, what your program's all about and what you're doing. And then you won't feel guilty about these boundary stepping things. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much, Erica. We really appreciate your time and have an incredible day. Thank you. You too. It was so much fun to be here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.